Hello all, welcome to my channel Weight Lecture. Today we will discuss multiple choice questions on veterinary medicine. Questions number first. The tall R wave in ECG denotes options A, left ventricular enlargement, options B, left arterial enlargement, option C, bilateral arterial enlargement or options D, right ventricular enlargement. The right answer is options A, that is a left ventricular enlargement. The tall R wave in ECG indicate left ventricular enlargement. If we see that uh, ECG, we found uh, there are three types of wave, that is P wave and QRX complex, and there is a, a T wave. The P wave represents, uh, there's arterial depolations, which is known uh, as arterial contractions. QRX complex represents uh, ventricular depolations, that is ventricular contractions. And there's a T wave, which represents uh, ventricular repulsion, that's ventricular relaxations. And if there is a, in ECG, if there's a prolongation of a P wave, which indicate left arterial enlargement, and if there is an increased P wave, that indicate right arterial enlargement, if there's a tall R wave and prolonged QRX complex, that indicate left ventricular enlargement, and if there is a deepening, deepening of that S wave, that indicate right ventricular enlargement, and if there is a picked T wave that indicate hyperkalemia conditions. Hyperkalemia where there is an increased amount of a potassium in blood. Okay. Questions number uh, second. Lactation titani in cattle is due to options A. Hypoglycemia. Options B. Hypomagnesemia. Option C. Hypocalcemia. Or options D. Hypophosphatemia. The right answer is options B. That is a hypomagnesemia. Lactation titani in cattle is occurred due to that hypomagnesemic conditions that is where there is a low magnesium level in blood while in horse it is due to that hypocalcemic condition that is a, there is a low calcium level in blood. Eclampsia which is a known as milk fever in a bitch is occurred due to that hypocalcemia and hypoglycemia where there is a low glucose and uh, calcium level in the blood. Let's see that grass titani which is known as a hypomagnesemic titani grass stagers, lactation titani, wheat pasture poisoning or winter titani is a metabolic disease which is mainly occurs in our ruminants uh, which are usually uh, fed of pastures of rapidly growing grass especially in early season, springs. Okay. And if there is another metabolic disease that is hypophosphatemia. Uh, there is a metabolic hemolytic disease of lactating cattle and pregnant buffalo where there is a, that, uh, that, uh, that post-pasturance, uh, we can see post pasturing hemoglobinuria in cattle and there's a hemoglobinuria of that uh, pregnant cat, uh, buffalo, okay. is mainly uh, clinically, if we uh, see that, we found that there's a hypophosphatemia, there's a low level of phosphorus in blood and we can also see there's an intravascular hemolysis of erythrocytes, okay. Questions number uh, third, iron deficiency anemia is more common in options A, calf, Options B, lamb. Option C, piglet. Options D, puppy. The right answer is option C, that's a piglet. Iron uh, deficiency anemia is more common in a piglet. Since uh, piglet anemia, that's iron deficiency anemia, is mainly a condition so which is seen in a piglet uh, within of, uh, uh, one uh, a month of uh, that uh, birth of age and is more common in a suckling piglet. Since that uh, the, the iron requirement for that pig is very high, as compared to that iron supplement since uh, the milk uh, is a very poor source of iron for that uh, piglet and that uh, uh, and also there is a very less uh, amount of iron storage in a newborn piglet while that uh, the rapidly growing uh, piglet requirement is very high as the, which leads to that prone to piglet to that iron deficiency anemia in this conditions we need to supply iron from external source okay and let's see that different types of an anemia we found that anemia are classified either on the basis of uh, morphology and on the basis of etiology on the basis of a morphology on the basis of a morphology of that rbc uh, we can uh, see there's a four types of anemia that's a normocytic normochromic anemia where there's R rbc say uh, size is a uh, normal and there's a hemoglobin concentration within a rbc is also normal okay macrocytic normochromic anemia where there's a rbc size increases but there's a hemoglobin concentrated within a cells is normal macrocytic hypochromic anemia where that size of the rbc increases and also there is a hemoglobin concentration within an rbc decreases microcytic hypochromic anemia where there is a size of that rbc decreases also there is a low level of hemoglobin within an rbc okay 
on the basis of uh, etiology we found five type of uh, uh, there is anemia hemorrhagic anemia where there is a hemorrhage due to that wounds trauma that's lead to decrease in uh, that blood that lead to cause that hemorrhagic anemia hemolytic anemia where there is a rupture of that uh, cells okay uh, it either be extrinsic where there is a cells uh, ruptures rbc ruptures uh, outside that the blood vessels or it it, it can be intrinsic anemia and intrinsic uh, hemolytic anemia is seen in case of sickle cell anemia and thalassemia conditions okay a plastic anemia where there is a uh, defect in a bone marrow and which lead to that uh, productions of rbc become hampered uh, such type of anemia is known as a plastic anemia nutritional deficiency anemia uh, those uh, that uh, when there is a deficiency of that those new those nutrients which is required for that uh, that productions of rbc or that maturation of rbc that's leads to cause nutritional deficiency anemia uh, such like that iron deficiency protein deficiency vitamin b12 deficiency folic acid deficiency lead to cause nutritional deficiency anemia disease induced anemia there's a different types of disease disease which uh, induces that uh, hem hemolysis and such type of uh, uh, such type of disease uh, induce uh, leads anemia such known as disease induced anemia okay questions number 4 uh, hydrocyanic acid poisoning is results in options a anoxic anoxia options b anemic anoxia option c histotoxic anoxia or option d stagnant anoxia the right answer is option c that is a histotoxic anoxia hydrocyanic acids poisoning is results in histotoxic anoxia let's see different types of anoxia then uh, we found first is anoxic anoxia conditions when there is no enough uh, uh, oxygens available to breathe it that is not no you know enough oxygens available within environments uh, leads to that cause anoxic anoxia it is mainly seen when person is at high altitude okay and anemic anoxia when there is no enough uh, amount of uh, blood or hemoglobin which carry oxygens uh see in case of that hemorrhages such type of anoxia is known as anemic anoxia histotoxic anoxia that is a uh, that anoxia occurs when uh, the cells is uh, when there is a inability of the cells to take or use oxygens from blood despite normal delivery of oxygens to such cells that is known as histotoxic anoxia stagnant anoxia that is known as hypoxic ischemic uh, injury occurs when uh, blood doesn't reach to that uh, the brain or that other body part Uh, mainly that due to that cardiovascular uh, diseases uh, mainly the major cause of that is an stagnant anoxia okay questions number 5 uh, the antidote for organophosphate poisoning is options a atropine sulfate with oxime options b calcium borogluconate option c methylene blue option d sodium thiosulfate the right answer is options a which is a atropine uh, sulfate with oxime Uh, let's see some uh, poisons along with their antidote then arsenic poisoning uh, there's antidote is bal or dicar dimer caprol or sodium thiosulfate okay copper antidote is that uh, copper poisoning antidote is ammonium molybdenum plus sodium sulfate lead antidote is that uh, calcium disodium edta okay molybdenum uh, poisoning antidote is uh, copper sulfate nitrate nitrite poisoning antidote is 1% methylene blue cyanogenic plants uh, uh, poisoning antidote is sodium nitrite or sodium thiosulfate oxalate uh, poisoning antidote is lime water sweet clover uh, poisoning is that vitamin k organochlorine poisoning is that activated charcoal organophosphor poisoning is that atropine sulfate snake bite uh, poisoning antidote is mono or polyvalent antivenin therapy for bromide that is a chloride for urea there is a vinegar or 5% acetic acid for mimosin there is a steam processing or ferrous sulfate salt okay questions number 6 uh, which of the following is having high therapeutic value in gastric ulcer of dog options a sucral fat options b h1 blocker option c cisapride options d metaclopramide the right answer is options a which is a suc uh, sucral fat okay sucral fat are used to treat or to prevent ulcer in a gi tract okay uh, an h1 receptor if we see that uh, classification of a histamine receptor we found there is a three types of histamine receptors blockers that is h1 receptors blocker h2 receptors blocker h3 receptors blocker okay h1 uh, receptors blockers are used to treat allergic reactions uh, example of h1 receptor blocker that is diphenhydramine uh, may may 
पाई रामायण मेलियट प्रोमिथाजाइन हाइड्रोक्लोराइड एंड फेनिरामाइन मेलियट ओके एस्ट्रो रिसेप्टर ब्लॉकर इंक्लूड सीमेटिडिन एंड रेनिटिडिन विच इज यूज टू रिड्यूस गैस्ट्रिक एसिड रिलीज ओके एस्ट्री रिसेप्टर ब्लॉकर दैट इज अरामाइड एंड इम्प्रोमिडिन विच इज यूज टू ट्रीट न्यूरो डिजेनेटिव कंडीशन ओके सीसाप्राइड इज दैट यूज टू ट्रीट गैस्ट्रिक इम्टिंग डिसऑर्डर एसिलेट इम्टिंग ऑफ दैट स्टमक एंड प्रोपोल्शन ऑफ अ फूड थ्रू इंटेस्टाइन बाय इंक्रीजिंग पेरिस्टालसिस Uh, this uh, cisaprides is actually used in cats to manage chronic constipation and mega colon conditions okay if we see that metoclopramide metoclopramide is used to stimulate stomach and upper small intestine movement uh, to prevent uh, oesophageal reflux okay questions number 7 uh, the most common cause of urolithiasis in canine is options a vedelite urolith options b xanthine urolith option c hydroxy apatite urolith option d struvite urolith the right answer is option d that is a struvite urolith okay the most common cause of urolithiasis in canine is struvite urolith uh, since uh, struvite is the normal uh, component of a dog urine and will remain dissolved as long as the urine is acidic and is not uh, too much concentrated if the urine uh, become exceptionally concentrated or if it become alkaline then estrovites uh, crystals will precipitate and fall out of the solutions and causing estrovites urolith in, in a dog okay vedelite urolith is observed in patients who suffered from that uh, hypercalciuria uh, or uh, hyperoxaluria conditions okay when there is a calcium levels high and when there is a oxalic acids levels high okay xanthine urolithis are absolutely rare and it is mainly uh, caused when there is a inborn is defect of xanthine oxidase due to which that xanthine cannot be oxidized to that uh, uric acids lead to excretions of uh, hypoxanthines and xanthines increases since xanthine is a uh, poorly soluble which results in xanthine stone formation okay hydroxy apatite urolith uh, which is also known as calcium phosphate stone it is mainly seen in dog uh, which is having a metabolic disorder such as uh, primary hyper uh, parathyroidism conditions renal tubular acidosis excessive dietary calcium and phosphorus okay questions number 8 uh, which of the following has high therapeutic index in acute renal failure options a vasopressin options b furosemide options c spironolactone options d dopamine the right answer is options d which is a uh, dopamine okay uh, dopamine is used uh, in acute renal failure as it dilate renal arteries increase urine output and protect the kidney from injury at low dose uh, dopamine stimulates dopamine 1 and dopamine 2 receptors inducing natriuresis that is a sodium excretion and urine excretion diuresis and enhance renal blood flow by renal vasodilation okay while vasopressin that is known as adh hormone is released from that posterior pituitary which is actually act on that uh, kidney and promote reabsorption of water and electrolyte from distal tubules prevents water loss and uh, dehydrations okay uh, and we said that furosemides is actually a loop diuretics which acts on that uh, loop of healthy and promote excretion of a fluids uh, medicated uh, mainly during heart failure and liver scarring or kidney diseases okay if we see that spironolactone which is a potassium sparing diuretics which increases uh, diuresis that is a that increases that urinations and without loss of potassium it is act as an antagonist of uh, aldosterone and promote passage of sodium in water outside the body okay questions number 9 uh, inflammatory bowel disease in dog is suspected to be due to options a defective immuno regulations options b dietary allergens option c eosinophilic gastroenteritis or options d all the right answer is options d that is all inflammatory bowel disease in dog is due to that uh, all that is defective immuno regulations dietary allergens and eosinophilic gastroenteritis all promote inflammatory bowel disease in dog inflammatory bowel disease is actually characterized by there is a over abundance of inflammatory cells Uh, which is located within a part of stomach small intestine and large intestine 
which disrupt the ability of that intestine tract to functions normally often resulting in chronic and protracted diarrhea uh, malabsorption weight loss anemia and malnutrition okay questions number 10 papal shaped abdomen is characteristic of options a trp options b abomasal displacement option c omasal impaction or options d vagal indigestion the right answer is options d that's a vagal indigestion a uh, papal shaped abdomen uh, that is a when when we viewed that uh, from behind the abdomen contour is appear as like a apple shaped on the left sides and a pear shaped on the right giving rise to terms papal dry from pear and apple uh, and also that's a rumen may become overladen and distended with a due to the impaired passage of ingesta and failure of erupt eruptions may lead to that tympani where there's a gas accumulation within a rumen and it occur uh, mainly due to that vagal when there's a vagal nerve damage which hinder that the passes passes of ingesta in reticular rumen abomasums and both cause uh, uh, is it uh, can be caused uh, due to the trp rumen acidosis or sufficient lacerations or left displacement of abomasum okay since uh, trp that's a reticulo uh, that's a traumatic reticulo peritonitis in cattle occurs when uh, that animal in ingest nails piece of wire or no other non metallic materials that injure the reticular wall and this uh, the sharp object uh, while uh, that uh, penetrating the reticular wall and uh, and also that uh, and then penetrate that perit peritoneum and uh, allowing that ingesta and bacteria to leak into that peritoneal cavity causing peritonitis and also sometimes leading to that adhesions of this abdomen uh, characterized by some clinical uh, signs such as like uh, rumen reticular atony that's that movement of that motility of rumen and reticulum get decreases and uh, there's a decrease in milk production too and there's a abdominal pain too okay and another is that abomasal displacement the abomasums uh, normally lie on that uh, the floor of that abdomen and it is uh, displaced when uh, it is filled with gas and goes to the rise on the top of the abdomen and more uh, likely it is displaced to the left side as, as compared to the right sides and uh, the causes of that abomasum uh, displacement can be taken as that uh, the failure of uh, when during that pregnancy time that abomasals get uh, due to that uh, uh, due to that uh, uterus uh, enlargement of uterus that abomasum get a little slight bit uh, uh, displaced and after the parturitions the abomasum should be come to their normal positions but when there is a fail to return to that normal place after displaced during pregnancy it's lead to cause that abomasum displacement and also that the floppiness nature of abomasums also lead to the displacement of abomasum okay questions number 11 acute bovine pulmonary emphysema and edema is due to options a uh, dietary high l tryptophan options b lung swarm infestations option c prolonged transit options d mono uh, options d that is mycotoxin the right answer is options a uh, when there is a dietary when there is a high dietary l tryptophan okay acute bovine pulmonary emphysema and edema uh, is occurred due to that high l tryptophan in diet acute bovine pulmonary edema and emphysema is also known as fog fever is an acute pneumonia of that adult uh, cattle uh, which occurs within a uh, 4 to 10 days of moving uh, from an overgrazed uh, pastures or a dry feed to the fresh lush green pastures okay uh since that uh, the the cattle which is uh, fed on a large stump on a dry feed uh, or that uh, the overgrazed pasture uh, for an extended period of time at the time their rumen is uh, already that uh, adapted uh, to that situations and uh, when there is a sudden change uh, to that cattle to that lush green pastures uh, and then uh, at the time the suddenly that drastically the dietary dietary protein concentration get increases and one of that amino acids of in plant protein that is a l tryptophan uh, which is actually uh, converted by that rumen bacteria to that substance that is called 3 methyl lindol and this 3 methyl lindol is absorbed from that ruminal wall and it is very uh, that uh, is very uh, that toxic to the primary cells uh, of that lungs as a high level of 3 methyl uh that lindols uh moves to the lungs and cause uh, lungs more, more lungs tissue destroys and cause that uh, pneumonic conditions and uh, there's a pulmonary emphysema and edema will be seen okay 
and if we see that sir clinical sign of this uh, acute bovine pulmonary emphysema and edema there is a difficulty in breathing coughing and frothy at mouth anxiety collapse and that we can see okay questions number 12 uh, ovarian ketosis is also referred as options a pregnancy toxemia options b twin lamp disease option c acetonemia of ship options d all the right answer is options d all okay ovarian uh, ketosis is also referred as pregnancy toxemia twin lamp disease acetonemia of ship ketosis lambing paralysis and hypoglycemia extra okay uh, since uh, that uh, low blood sugar uh, cause an inadequate intake of energy during late gestations lead to a breakdown of a fat uh, produces uh, toxic ketone bodies mostly affect this ketone uh, bodies that affect uh, fat thin old and female uh, fat thin old females carrying twins characterized by there is a lethargy sluggishness lack of appetite poor muscles control and inability to rise extra in ship okay questions number 13 barker fold syndrome is due to options a antenatal or postnatal hypoxia options b isoimmune hemolytic anemia option c clostridial infections or options d premature folding the right answer is options a that is antenatal or postnatal hypoxia uh, barker fold syndromes uh, that is known as also known as neonatal uh, encephalopathy or hypoxic ischemic encephalopathies and also known as a uh, dummy fall uh, syndromes is actually a behavior uh, disturbance which is uh, seen in newborn fall uh, which is occurred due to that uh, decrease oxygen uh, level and which is a uh, decrease oxygen uh, level reaches that fall tissue during at the time of a birth or uh, that during pregnancy times characterized by sign ranging from there is a slow suckling uh, response at the time of a birth to that uh, hyper excitability and when there is a aimless uh, wandering in that uh, we can see that aimless wandering in a fall and there is a depressions uh, lying prone uh, loss of that muscle tone and there is a seizures we can also see seizures in that uh, in that uh, fall and the fall may also start uh, vocalizing uh, sounding like a barking dog therefore that barker fall uh, term has come questions number 14 uh, bulk tank milk somatic cells count suggestions of mastitis in a herd is options a when there is a 2 lakh somatic cells count per ml of blood or when there is a 2.5 lakh uh, uh, per ml of blood and when there is a 3 lakhs per ml of blood or when there is a 1.5 lakh per ml of blood the right answer is options uh, c that is a 3 lakh uh, per ml of blood bulk tank uh, uh, milk somatic cells count suggestions of mastitis in a herd is 3 lakhs per ml of blood uh, let's see some uh, cmt score Uh, uh, related with that ssc uh, range and there's interpretations okay when the somatic cells count is uh, uh, lie between that 0 to 2 lakh per ml of blood uh, then we can uh, consider a cmt uh, cmt score that is negative and we can consider that the quarter is healthy okay and when there's a somatic cells count ranges between uh, 2 lakh to 4 lakh uh, then a cmt score is stress and uh, at the times so we can consider is there's a subclinical mastitis conditions when the somatic cells count ranges between 4 lakh to 12 lakhs per ml of blood uh, we consider it's mild mastitis and cmt score is 1 when the somatic cells count ranges between 12 lakh to 50 lakhs per ml of blood uh, we consider it's moderate mastitis and uh, the cmt score is 2 and when the somatic cells count is over 50 uh, lakh per ml of blood then it's a serious mastitis and the cmt score is 3 okay Uh, questions number 15 persistent ruminal tympani uh, bradycardia and there's a displaced heart sound in cattle suggest options a traumatic peri pericarditis options b traumatic reticulitis option c diaphragmatic hernia or options d trp the right answer is option c that is a diaphragmatic hernia when there is a persistent ruminal uh, tympani there is a bradycardia that's a decrease in the heart rate and uh, uh, displays a heart sound in cattle uh, suggest diaphragmatic hernia okay diaphragmatic hernia is a serious uh, digestive disorder which is mainly seen in buffalo involving uh, there is a rupture of a diaphragm and uh, the uh, through which that abdominal content passes uh, from that ruptured uh, that uh, ruptures uh, diaphragm uh, to the thoracic cavity 
and it is more common in buffalo than cattle etiology can be there is a congenital weak diaphragm predisposing factor that is a advanced pregnancy and parturition conditions uh, uh, that favored uh, that uh, the diaphragmatic hernia and if we see that sir, clinical sense we found that anorexia that's a uh, buffalo doesn't eat anything and we found that persistent tympani that's a uh, uh, rumen always uh, filled with the blood okay air na? and there's a scanty pasty feces occurs and there's a bradycardia and displaced heart sound okay questions number uh, 16 palliative treatment of disease means options a to prolong the life options b specific therapy option c eliminate etiology option d symptomatic therapy the right answer is options a which is that to prolong the life okay palliative treatment of a disease means to prolong the life uh, let's see different types of uh, therapy and treatment empirical therapy is that application of a drugs and a uh, treatment uh, not derived from that scientific method but on the mere based on experience gained by clinicians okay rational therapy is that uh, application of a drugs and treatment is based on scientific knowledge of a pharmacology of a drugs and on pathology of disease that is known as a rational therapy symptomatic therapy is that application of a drugs for treatment of only symptoms uh, with or without that proper diagnosis okay palliative therapy is that application of a drugs and treatment to control uh, the severity of a disease symptoms rather than to provide a cure okay supportive therapy is that application of a drugs directed toward maintaining the patient's physiological or functional integrity until until more definitive treatment can be carried out okay substitutive therapy is that application of a drugs uh, directed toward supplying that endogenous substance which is normally present in body but deficiency in patients due to that uh, disease injury congenital uh, deficiency extra for example when there is a deficiency of a vitamin and we supply that vitamins from uh, outside uh, such type of uh, therapy is known as substitutive therapy okay general therapy is that uh, treatment of disease without use of a drugs for example like uh, uh, mechanical therapy that is a uh, uh, by mean of uh, use of like uh, that walking and exercise okay physical therapy uh, by use of that uh, radiations and uh, ultrasonography that is known as physical therapy heliotherapy by mean of use of that sunlight if that treatment is done hydrotherapy by means of water the treatment is done dietary therapy by supply of the dietary elements treatment is done uh, psychotherapy by that uh, mentally treatment is done and placebo therapy in case of a placebo uh, therapy the patient is supposed that uh, he is suffering from a disease or uh, uh, at that time we give uh, in in place of that uh, drugs we just give that uh, some substitute or that uh, the some neutral product as a medicines to that uh, patients and patients uh, biting that uh, the that's uh, that's nutrient product they get recovered uh, such type of therapy is known as placebo therapy okay uh, questions number uh, 17 polakaiuria means options a excessive urinations options b frequent painful urinations option c constant dribbling of urine options d decrease output of urine the right answer is options uh, b which is frequent painful urinations okay let's see different terms uh, which is related to urinations polakaiuria that is frequent uh, painful urinations stranguria that is urinations with abnormal uh, constituents okay dysuria which is difficulty in urinations anuria when there is a complete absence of urine productions okay and in uresis that is the conditions of that involuntary involuntary discharge of urine during slips cystorrhagia uh, when there is a bleeding from that bladder systolic when there is a uh, when there is a stone in a urinary bladder cystitis when there is inflammation of urinary bladder cystalgia when there is a pain in that urinary bladder okay questions number 18 uh, paper crackling rails on auscultation is suggestive of options a pneumonia options b bronchitis option c pulmonary emphysema options d pulmonary edema the right answer is option c which is pulmonary uh, emphysema let's see some abnormal uh, breathing sounds when there's a paper uh, crackling rail on auscultation represents that pulmonary emphysema conditions uh, when there is a gurgle or wheeze or raunchy uh, sounds on auscultation that uh, represents narrowing air passage uh, such as in case of asthma or chronic obstructive pulmonary disorders foreign bodies and tumor conditions uh, when we uh, heard the sound as like a friction uh, rubs 
uh, that indicate pericarditis conditions. Estidor, which is a high pitch, uh, rapid air flow through that obstructed airway caused by inflammations, is mainly seen in case of crop or epiglottitis, epiglottitis conditions. Okay. Questions number uh, 19. Hydrothorax is commonly seen in horses suffering from options A, strangles, options B, African horse sickness. Option C, equine influenza. Option D, equine infectious anemia. The right answer is option B, which is African horse sickness. Hydrothorax represents that there is a fluids in that thorax is commonly seen in horse, which is suffering from African horse sickness. Okay. Uh, since it strangles, also known as equine uh, distemper or infectious adenitis, is an acute uh, infectious disease of equine caused by uh, Streptococcus equi, which is gram negative bacteria, mainly characterized by there is a cataral inflammations of the upper respiratory tract uh, with the suppurations and abscessions of associated lymph node. Okay, African horse sickness is a uh, life uh, threatening hemorrhagic disease of equine. Uh, respiratory and circulatory impairment is seen in case of that African horse sickness, mainly caused by African horse uh, sickness virus or B virus. Of a family, Rio Viridi family, uh, transmitted by that's a culicoid species that's midges, okay, characterized by there's a fever and edema of that lungs, <coughs> sorry, a pleura and subcut tissue, as well as uh, there's a patechials and generalized hemorrhage, okay. While equine influ influenza is an also that acute uh, infectious, uh, acute means sort acting and that infectious uh, disease of horse mainly caused by myxovirus A equi first and myxovirus A equi second. Uh, there's a characterized by general uh, septicemia and uh, respiratory problems like uh, watery to mucopurulent uh, discharge from nostrils and there's a pneumonia and uh, distress uh, abdominal uh, respirations also accompanied by severe uh, persistent dry cough. Okay. Next, there's an equine infectious anemia is a non-contagious uh, uh, chronic Infectious disease of equine are uh, mainly caused by lentivirus of family uh, retroviridae, that's RNA virus, uh, characterized by there's a emaciation, means uh, that animal get very uh, that uh, uh, weakened and very thin anemia, that's a decrease in a blood uh, a blood level or that hemoglobin level, intermittent fever, sometimes the fever gets high and sometimes the fever gets low, and there's a generalized lymphoproliferative changes. And lymph uh, nodes gets an uh, proliferative, uh, that's a uh, that's a, the multiplications of lymphocytes and edema. Okay, this is this is this is a this is a conditions which is seen in case of equine infectious anemia. Okay, uh, questions number uh, twenty. Systolic and diastolic murmur on auscultation is suggestive of options A myocarditis conditions, options B pericarditis conditions. Option C, pattern ductus arteriosus. Option C, vegetative endocarditis. The right answer is option C, which is a pattern ductus arteriosus. Okay. Pattern ductus arteriosus is a uh, like a, uh, developmental anomalies where there is a uh, there is a there is there is a communications between that uh, pulmonary artery and there is a aorta. Okay. And uh, in case of that pattern ductus arteriosus, both sound like systolic and diastolic murmur. There's a sound which is a uh, systolic uh, systolic murmur referred to the sound which is a uh, uh, produces when that's heart contract, and diastolic murmur is a sounds uh, which is sounds comes when there's a heart uh, gut relax. Okay, and uh, uh, the, if there's a both uh, sounds uh, uh, seen uh, uh, on auscultations uh, heard on uh, heard on auscultations is suggestive of pattern ductus arteriosus. Let's see different types of heart murmur sound, okay? Uh, in case of tricuspid regurgitations, uh, we see that uh, systolic murmur sound. It is known as a, a carvalo murmur, okay? Uh, if, in case of innocence murmur, we, we also heard that systolic murmur sound. It is known as stills murmur. In case of ventricular septal defect, uh, when there is a two ventricular uh, that uh, uh, connected, that blood is uh, exchanged, okay? That is known as a systolic uh, uh, murmur and uh, such type of uh, sound is known as roger murmur sound. Okay. Uh, when there is aortic regurgitations that produces diastolic murmur and uh, uh, specific name is Austin Flint murmur. Okay. 
when there's a pulmonary regurgitation that's diastolic murmur sound is heard that's uh, the specific name is graham still murmur and when there's a rheumatic uh, rheumatic uh, heart disease that's when there's a mitral valve stenosis which is mitral valve that is known as bicuspid valve stenosis that's leads to produce diastolic murmur and such types of murmur is known as a carry comb murmur okay and when there's a ductus uh, patent ductus arteriosus which is produce continuous murmur that's both systolic and diastolic murmur uh, is seen uh, such type of uh, murmur is known as gibson murmur okay questions number 21st which of the following is considered as a standard lead for ecg recording options a lead 1 options b lead 2 options c lead 3 options d none the right answer is options b which is lead 2 lead 2 is considered as a standard lead for ecg recording because it generally provide the best view and it is most useful for monitoring as it's lie close to the cardiac axis and allow the best view of both p and r wave okay in ecg machines uh, there are two 12 leads are available out of which that's lead first lead second and lead thirds uh, are uh, known as bipolar uh, limbs and standard limbs leads and three are augmented unipolar limbs lead that is avl avr and av f and 6 are chest or uh, precardial lead which is f uh, b1 b2 b3 b4 b5 b6 uh, which is uh, this two are that unipolar leads this leads uh, are allowed uh, that the uh, allowed that the view uh, of uh, of that heart from the different angles okay questions number uh, 22 uh, case fatality rate is as high as 50% in options a type first abomasal ulcer options b type second abomasal ulcer option c type third abomasal ulcer or option d type four abomasal ulcer the right answer is option uh, uh, that is a d which is type four abomasal ulcer case fatality rate is high as 50% in type four abomasal ulcer since abomasal ulcer is a uh, classified uh, on the basis of a depth of penetrations or the degree of hemorrhage or peritonitis caused by the ulcer uh, the type first uh, uh, abomasal ulcer is a non perforating in nature uh, and there is a uh, no hemorrhage type second is a non perforating with a significant uh, blood loss that is hemorrhage is seen type third is a perforating with localized uh, there is a peritonitis inflammation of a peritoneum and type four is also perforating with uh, there is a diffuse peritonitis okay questions number uh, 23 increased frequency uh, tenesmus with presence of abundant mucus in feces is suggestive of options a small bubble diarrhea small uh, options b large bubble diarrhea option c exocrine pancreatic insufficiency or options d none the right answer is options b which is a large bubble diarrhea uh, let's see the difference uh, between that small bubble diarrhea and large bubble diarrhea since uh, in a small bubble diarrhea large volume of feces is defecated while in case of large bubble diarrhea small volume of feces is defecated and in small bubble diarrhea there is a uh, there is a defecation frequency of defecation is either normal or increase but in large bubble diarrhea that frequency of defecation is increase in a small bubble diarrhea we can see there's a fluctuance and estetoria uh, that's a, a fat in feces and in case of that large bubble diarrhea we found mucus more mucus in feces in case of small bubble diarrhea there's a melina there's a tiry black feces is seen in case of that large bubble diarrhea we can see hematochezia that's a frank red colored feces is seen uh, in case of small bubble diarrhea there's a weight loss in case of large bubble diarrhea there is a tenes mus in case of small bubble diarrhea we found that vomiting may occurs but in case of large bubble diarrhea we see we found pain but no vomiting okay let's see that clinical signs which is associated with exocrine pancreatic insufficiency we found there's a weight loss and there's a abdominal pain fluctuance uh, and blotting and oily uh, diarrhea uh, deficiency of vitamin k and uh, d because of lack of fat and electrolyte uh, deficiency okay uh, since with that fat uh, this vitamin fat soluble vitamin uh, k and uh, d also that uh, move toward that uh, with that fat okay and lead to cause deficiency of this uh, vitamins okay uh Questions number twenty uh, four. Which among the following is an osmotic diuretics? Options A. Prosemides. Options B. Spironolactone. Options C. Dopamine. Options D. Manitol. 
at the right answer is option d which is a mannitol mannitol is an example of osmotic diuretics let's see different uh, types of diuretics uh, okay osmotic diuretics example is mannitol and its site of action is a proximal uh, tubules and descending loops of henle and collecting duct and carbonic anhydrase inhibitors uh, the example is acetazolamides uh, its site of action is a uh, proximal tubules thiazides uh, uh, example is hydrochloro uh, thiazides and its site of action is a uh, distal convoluted tubules and loop diuretics uh, that's example that's crucemides and uh, ethacrynic acids and its site of action is loop of henle and potassium sparing example is spironolactone and uh, amyloride and its uh, site of action is collecting duct okay questions number 25 which of the following is respiratory stimulants options a uh, theophylline options b guaifenesin option c uh, bromohexine options d doxapram the right answer is options d which is a doxapram okay uh, doxapram is used as respiratory stimulants uh, it is also known as uh, analeptic as they stimulates the respirations uh, and uh, used in condition of respiratory uh, failure or respiratory distress they stimulates the uh, they stimulates the respirations by stimulating the camo receptors which is mainly present on carotid artery and that aortic arc uh, which lead to that stimulates uh, medulla oblongata especially that respiratory centers and results in increasing breathing and that heart rate okay theophylline is a is a bronchodilator uh, which mainly uh, relax the muscles of uh, bronchial tubes of lungs and used to that uh, treat the symptoms of like uh, uh, that when there is a bronchial uh, ectasis uh, a bronchial stenosis occurs in case of that asthma bronchitis emphysema and other lungs lungs disease at that times so we uh, prescribe that theophylline okay uh, guaifenesin and bromohexine uh both are that expectorant that they are used to, to uh, control cough since bromohexine is mainly good for the dry coughs while guaifenesin is good for moist cough and is used to clear mucus or phlegm from the respiratory tract okay questions number uh, 26 which of the following is opioid analgesic options a indomethacin options b flunazine megalomine option c aceta aceta aminophen options d pantojocin the right answer is options uh, uh, d that is a pantojocin pantojocin is opioid analgesic it is also known as narcotics and uh, uh, its analgesic are the drugs group of drugs which provides a reversible relief from that pain and if we see that's analgesic we found a uh, two five two types of analgesic that is a opioid analgesic which is also known as narcotics and another is non steroids uh, anti inflammatory drugs that's nsaids uh, these are all anti inflammatory analgesic and antipyretic drugs okay uh, reduce inflammations and analgesic reduce pain and antipyretics that's to reduce fever okay and they act by inhibiting that uh, cyclooxygenase enzymes on the basis of that uh, nature of their inhibiting that cyclooxygenase enzymes we found there is a two types of uh, first is non selective cox uh, inhibitors and another is selective cox2 inhibitors okay since there are two types of cyclooxygenase enzymes cox1 cyclooxygenase and cox2 cyclooxygenase enzymes uh, since cox1 uh, cyclooxygenase enzymes is uh, mainly responsible for physiological uh, functions and while uh, cox2 cyclogenic uh, enzymes is uh, is responsible for that inflammations Uh, is activate is uh, activate and uh, promote inflammatory conditions okay and if we see that non selective uh, cox uh, two uh, cox inhibitors which inhibits both cox1 and cox2 enzymes the drugs include aspirin ibuprofen ketoprofen uh, mifenamic acid diclofenac uh, pyroxicam indomethacin phenylbutazone extra while uh, cox selective cox2 inhibitors uh, example that's meloxicam and Uh, colicozib okay and the second group uh, of analgesics that's opioids that's also known as narcotics uh, since opioids uh, uh, act uh, by uh, by stimulating that opioid receptors uh, which are g coupled protein receptors uh, which are coupled with the g proteins and their activation has number of actions like uh, they closing that uh, voltage sensitive calcium channel they stimulates that potassium efflux leading to that hyperpolarization conditions 
they reduce uh, CMP camp productions. Overall, the effect is that reductions in uh, neuronal cell excit excitability reduce transmissions of uh, uh, nociceptive impulse. And uh, examples of that opioids, uh, narcotics is fentanyl, morphine, codeine, extra. Questions number uh, 27. Which of the following is the promising uh, angiotensin converting uh, enzymes inhibitors for dilated uh, cardiomyopathy in dog? Options A, digitalis. Options B, amiodipine uh, bacillate. Option C, atinolol. Option C, inal april milie. The right answer is options uh, D, that is inal april uh, milie. Inal april milie uh, is used to treat high blood pressures. Uh, it's uh, by lowering blood pressures. It helps to prevent the strokes, heart rate, and kidney problem. It acts uh, by inhibiting that angiotensin converting enzymes, uh, so that blocking that uh, blocking the conversion of angiotensin first to the angiotensin second. Since angiotensin second is a vasoconstrictor, results in decrease in blood pressure. Okay, while digitalis, also known as a digitoxin, is a cardiotonic or cardiac glycosides. It is a help and uh, injures and weaken heart to pump more efficiently, strain the force of that heart muscles contractions. Help restore, restore a normal uh, steady heart rhythms and improve blood circulations. Digitalis inhibits the uh, sodium potassium ATPase membrane uh, pump, resulting in an increase in intracellular sodiums. And in order to that uh, remove that uh, intracellular sodiums, in exchange of that uh, calcium get pump, pumped in, and which lead to that uh, the uh, that uh, that contractions of heart and that uh, increases the heart rate. Okay. Amiodipine uh, bacillate is a long-acting calcium channel blocker which is uh, used to treat symptoms of uh, hypertension, chest pain and coronary uh, artery disease. And uh, okay, atinolol is a beta receptors blocker. It is also used to treat uh, high blood pressure conditions. Okay. Questions number uh, 28. Effective thyroxine dose for canine hypothyroidism is Options A, 0 to 0 0.2 to 0 0.4 mg per kg body weight. Options B, 0 0.02 to 0 0.04 mg per kg body weight. Option C, 0 0.002 to 0 0.004 mg per kg body weight. Options D, 2 to 4 mg per kg body weight. The right answer is options uh, B, that is 0 0.02 to 0 0.04 mg per kg body weight. Effective thyroxine dose for canine Hypothyroidism is 0 0.02 to 0 0.04 mg per kg body weight. Okay. Questions number 29. Diabetics uh, cataract is due to accumulations of which of the following in lens capsules. Options A. Insulin. Options B. Sorbitol. Options C. Isopropanol. Options D. Ketoacid. The right answer is options B which is uh, sorbitols. Intracellular accumulations of uh, sorbitols lead to osmotic change resulting in hydropic lens fiber uh, that degenerates and forms sugar uh, diabetic cataract. Okay. Questions number uh, 30. Trypsins like immunoreactivity TLI assay in dog is highly sensitive and a specific test for options A. Inflammatory bobble disease. Options B. Acute pancreatitis. Option C. Exocrine pancreatic insufficiency. or Option D. Large bobble disease. The right answer is option uh, C, which is exocrine pancreatic insufficiency. The radio immunoassay uh, for trypsins uh, like immunoreactivity is one of the most sensitive and specific tests for detecting exocrine pancreatic insufficiency. And abnormally low serum TLI concentrations, uh, that is less than uh, 2.5 nanogram per ml, indicate that end stage of uh, exocrine pancreatic efficiency. Okay, inefficiency. That's must for today. Thank you.